tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 4 3ds Max fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold 4 3ds Max course, which is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 3ds Max thoroughly. Welcome folks, it's Khezri here from MoGraphPlus.com and in this video we'll learn how to create realistic fabric shaders in Arnold 4 3ds Max using the newly introduced sheen component in the standard surface shader. You can download the project files for this video down below in the description. I'm going to select the fabric geometry and press M to open up the material editor. Create a new Arnold standard surface shader and assign it. To create realistic fabric shaders, we only need base and sheen components. So let's zero out the specular weight and close all the rollups except for the base and sheen. If you take a look at this reference photo, you can start to see what makes fabrics look like fabrics. Look how the faces or polygons that are parallel to our viewing direction are darker and the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction become fuzzier and brighter. If you can simulate this, you can get realistic fabric shaders. And this is what sheen component is supposed to do in Arnold's standard surface shader. Now, in 3ds Max, let me first load this color palette that I've already saved out from the Utilities tab. First, we try to create a purple velvet shader. So for the base color, we can use this dark purple. If I run the active shade right now, you notice it doesn't look like fabric at all because we still don't have that previously described attribute of fabrics. If I increase the sheen weight to something like 0.3, we immediately get that fuzziness at the glancing angles. You notice how the parallel faces to our viewing direction are showing the defined darker base color and the perpendicular faces are showing that defined white sheen color. In addition to that white color, sheen component also adds that feeling of fuzziness by simulating microfibers. I'm going to stop the active shade for now. We also have this sheen roughness, which modulates how much the microfibers diverge from the surface normal direction. Basically, using the roughness while you can control where that fuzziness begins. By increasing it, it begins at lower angles from the parallel faces. And by decreasing it, the fuzziness starts at higher angles from the parallel faces. To see this in action, let's start the active shade again. If I set the roughness to 0.1, you see how the sheen effect is limited to very extreme glancing angles. And if set to something like 0.6, now that sheen effect is more widespread and starts earlier. For something like velvet, uh, probably something like the sheen weight of um, 1 and the sheen roughness of 0.1 would work. And for the sheen color, let's use a brighter, less saturated color compared to our base color. I'm just going to copy that color from this color palette that we have here. And now, as you can see, we get this nice velvet shader. If we bring up the reference picture again and zoom in a tad, you notice we have this fabric pattern throughout in this particular obviously a reference photo. So let's add this as well and learn how to do it. Now duplicate this shader and assign the new shader and uh, load this fabric pattern image. And we want to use this as the bump map. So connect it to the bump map input of a bump 2D node. 
and connect the bump to the node to the normal input of the standard surface shader. I'm gonna set the bump height to around 0.8. We don't wanna be very aggressive because it will kind of destroy that feeling of velvet if the pattern is very obvious and sharp. And I'm gonna set the tiling of the fabric pattern image to something like 0.2 and 0.2. And now let's run the active shade again. And now we have this beautiful fabric pattern added to our velvet shader. Next, let's create a crushed velvet, something like this photo right here. For this, let's duplicate the original velvet shader. We need two base velvet shaders. One should be fairly brighter than the other one. Then we mix the two to get the final crushed velvet using a black and white photo. I'm gonna duplicate the velvet shader again. Now let's use a brighter base and sheen colors compared to our first velvet shader. We can use this colors from our color clipboard. Now add an Arnold layer shader. This is the shader that we use to combine basically different material and stack up different materials. Now connect the darker velvet shader to input one and connect the brighter velvet shader to input two. Load this map called BW8. and we can use it as the mix to input. Set the tiling for BW8 map to 0.2 and assign the layer shader to our geometry and run the active shade again. Now we are getting this nice and realistic crushed velvet shader. Next, let's create a simple upholstery cotton fabric shader, something like this. So let's create a new Arnold standard surface shader and assign it. I'm gonna zero out the specular weight as well. Load the fabric pattern image again and set its styling to 0.2. Let's run the active shade and draw a region to get faster feedbacks. Now let's connect the fabric pattern image to our base color. We want to use the same image for the sheen color as well, but we want it to be brighter compared to the base color texture because Obviously, that's what the sheen component is supposed to do. So I'm going to connect the fabric pattern image to an Arnold color correct map and connect the color correct map to the sheen color input of the standard surface shader. I'm going to set the sheen weight to 0.6 so we can actually see how it affects the overall shader and increase the gamma to five in the color correct node so we get quite a brighter version of our original texture. And simply set the sheen roughness to something around 0.2. It all really depends on you based on how you want it to be. And uh, if you wanna get that fuzzy feeling a bit more, you can increase the sheen roughness and sheen weight now for the bump map, I'm gonna connect the original fabric pattern image to the bump map input of a bump 2D node. Set the bump height to two and connect the bump 2D node to the normal input of the standard surface shader. Now let's uh, clear the region and render again. 
and here is our cotton shader sort of. Now while we are here, let's create a colored version of this. It should be very simple, just duplicate the whole shader. I'm gonna add a layer RGBA node. Use the fabric pattern image as input one and use this light reddish brown as the input two color and set the second layer operation or blending mode to negation and connect the layer RGBA to the base color input and simply use the same layer RGBA node as the input for the color correct node that is connected to the sheen color. For this to look better and kind of see that fuzziness a bit more, let's increase the sheen weight to something like 0.8. So it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want more of that fuzzy feeling, just increase the sheen weight. Let's run the active shade again. And there you have it. Next, let's go for a satin look. And for this one, we won't be utilizing the sheen component. As for satin, if we take a look at this reference photo, you notice satin is different and the highlights are playing with you sort of. There is no well-defined pattern that you can describe, but I have a pretty good formula to create highly realistic satin or silk shaders and it involves curves. So back in 3ds Max, let's create a new standard surface shader and zero out the specular weight and assign it to the fabric geometry. For silk or satin, first we need a facing ratio node. So let's load it and connect it to our base color. Facing ratio outputs zero or black for the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction and one or white for the parallel faces to our viewing direction but we want to be able to remap these values. For this, we can use a RAM float node. So I'm gonna connect the facing ratio node to the input port of the RAM float. And connect the RAM float to the base color input of the standard surface shader. Now using this curve, we can remap these values to whatever we want. There is a particular curve that results in a very, very close look to satin or silk. First, let's change the type to custom and use this arrow to open up this curve in a bigger window. We are trying to put the highest and brightest values to be a bit of the exact parallel angles to our viewing direction and making the very frontal angles to be, you know, less bright compared to basically the peak values, okay? And a curve like this should give us a silk or satin shader. We just need a bit more work to make the curve perfect. I've already saved out a better curve in my sample slots and if I instance it in the editor and connect it instead of the one that we already have, take a look at the curve here, you can see just a bit more complex, a bit more points. And by the way, the UX design for this curve editor is really, really bad and the guys at Solid Angle really need to take a second look at this and just work on it. It's uh, it's really hard to work with and I really suggest that you guys uh, change this a bit. I'm gonna run the active shade to see what we get. And there you have it. You can see it really looks like silk. The next thing would be to incorporate the specific colors that we are looking for. To do that, we can use a mix RGBA shader. So let's add one. 
For the input one color, let's use a dark purple from our color palette. And for the input two color, use this brighter shade of the same color. And for the mix input, we would connect the RAM float node. And now connect the mix RGBA shader to the base color. And let's run the active shade and see what we're getting. And voila, you have a very realistic satin shader. To get a different satin color, you can simply change the input one and two colors. Let's use this dark and bright green colors. And here is our green satin shader. For now, let's stop the active shade. For the final shader, let's create a towel shader that basically involves displacement mapping as well. Now create a new standard surface shader and assign it. Uh, zero out the specular weight as always and open up the base and the sheen components. Use this darker shade of blue as the base color and this brighter shade of the same color as the sheen color. and set the sheen weight to around one. Sheen roughness can stay at 0.3. You can adjust it as you wish. If I go to the modify panel, we already have this Arnold properties modifier applied to the fabric geometry. Let's go to the subdivision section and increase the iteration to about four. So we get, uh, get more uh, detail in our displacement mapping. Now enable the displacement and set the height to two and bounce padding to one. We have discussed displacement mapping thoroughly in our comprehensive introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max course, which is available on our website, mographplus.com. For the displacement map, let's load this towel image. This is just a black and white displacement map and set its tiling to around 0.6. and instance it as the displacement map in the displacement section of the Arnold properties modifier. Let's run the active shade and draw a small region to get a faster feedback. And here is our beautiful towel shader. So that's about creating realistic fabric shaders in Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to subscribe and follow MoGraph Plus. See you next time. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold for 3ds Max fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max course, which is a massive 8-hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for 3ds Max thoroughly.